like to call the regular village board meeting to order for the village of Shorewood on February the 11th in the year 2020. If you would, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Diane, roll call, please. Mayor Chapman. Here. Clarence DeBold. Present. Tony Luciano. Here. Dan Warren. Here. Oh, I uh, let the record show there is a quorum with my presence uh, and regular bu village business can be done if we're not going to annex anything. So, at any rate, I'll move on. Are there any citizens that wish to address the village board tonight? Appears not to be any. I'll move on to tonight's consent agenda, which consists of Approval of the regular meeting minutes for January the 14th. Approval of the regular meeting minutes for January the 28th. Approval of the Committee of the Whole meeting minutes for January the 28th. Also approval of accounts payable in the amount of $344,293.01. Number five, approval of a payment in the amount of $407,147.32 to P.T. Ferro Construction Company for the Birch Drive drainage improvements. Number six, approval of a payment in the amount of $12,000 to Edward Betis <clears throat> and Associates for Consulting and Research Review Appraisal Services for ComEd Project. Are there any items on tonight's consent agenda that trustee would like removed for further review, or are there any questions on the consent? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay. Diane, roll call, please. Luciano? Yes. DeBold? Yes. Warren? Yes. And Chapman? Yes. The consent stands approved as read. Moving on to reports and communications. Are there any uh, communications to the board, Dan? No. Okay, I have no proclamations. Uh, do you have a comment that the administrator, I, and Trustee DeBold were at, the, uh, at a meeting yesterday with the YMCA, uh, which we have been since the formation of that committee? Uh, or that group, I guess. And uh, we're just uh, kind of moving forward. They're, they're checking on some information that we asked, that we asked for. And uh, progress is slow when you kind of deal in that kind of a group. And uh, we'll have some <clears throat> later news for you maybe in about a month or so. And uh, <coughs> probably have a, a full report on which way that committee thinks we should go, okay? You say that's about it? Yep, they are, uh, like you said, their, their board wants a little more information as well, so. Yeah. Yeah. So, no major headway, no major news on that issue. Okay, we'll move on to our order of business tonight. Business item number one, discussion on IDOT phase one, engineering of Sile Road. Uh, Mr. Dre and Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've been asked to put together, or I've been asked to, to provide the board with a, an update on um, IDOT's phase one engineering for the Sile Road improvements, which is or was part of that whole proposed interchange project. Um, so I wanted to give you an update on that tonight, um, talk kind of about some next steps going forward. Um, and then there's a couple bits of information that IDOT is asking the village to provide to them that um, we're hoping to um, solicit some input from, from you on tonight as well. 
Um, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll just move right into it. So, if, if um, going back a little bit, this, the, um, when we first started hearing about this I-55 at um, Illinois 59 Inter Interchange Project, it was a big regional project um, that has since been broken out, as, as we've talked about um, fairly recently, into four separate projects. Um, those four separate projects are the I-55 at Illinois 59 Diverging Diamond Interchange, um, the U.S. 52 corridor improvements um, from River Road to Hobalt, which would provide two lanes in each direction from, from River Road to Hobalt, um, Olympic Boulevard, which is in, in Joliet, and then the Sile Road improvements. So those four are now separate projects that IDOT is moving forward at various um, rates. Um, and obviously the one that we've been really interested in lately is Sile Road because it's a village street um, and it's going to see some impacts from um, the interchange as well as, as regional development. So uh, we recently in the last week or so had a meeting with IDOT where that project was, was a focus. And so that's kind of what I'm here to talk to you about is, is what we talked about and where things are at with that. Um, and so the main purpose of that component, that Sile Road component, is to improve Sile Road so that it can handle year 2040 traffic volumes. Um, that's what the interchange is being designed to. Um, that's what all the, the IDOT project is, all those projects are being designed to. Um, and so that's really the, the, the intent of this. And so um, hopefully you can see on, on the screen here, but really what that, it, what that involves, um, it, here's Sarver Drive, um, it, and here is um, fr Southwest Frontage Road. Um, and this, this light gray is, is IDOT's project. The dark black would be is the Sile Road um, improvement project. And so um, one of the components of that project to help with capacity is to widen it to three lanes. So at Sarver and at Canterbury, there are left turn lanes, um, and that will help with, um, with the capacity through there. To give you an idea of what we're looking at as far as future traffic goes, right now there's about 10,000 vehicles per day on Sile Road, and the 2040 projections are 20,000 vehicles today, per day. So traffic on Sile Road, which already creates some issues, um, especially in the afternoons, um, is, is projected to double between now and, and 2040. Um, so one, like I said, one component is to widen the three lanes, which, will, which would help um, with capacity. Um, another component to that are many roundabouts proposed at States Lane and Raven uh, Road um, as intersection improvements. So right now, um, States Lane and Raven Road are stop, always stop control, and they just don't operate very well, especially considering the amount of traffic that we have on Sile. Um, these many roundabouts are what is um, you know, one, of the, one of the alternatives that were proposed by IDOT um, to improve intersection uh, capacity and allow these intersections to operate um, in a satisfactory manner under year 2040 traffic. Um, IDOT had previously looked at traffic signals and they had previously looked at um, converting Siler Road to a four lane road that basically had an S curve here rather than the, the intersections. And those were dropped based off of um, input provided, overwhelmingly, overwhelming input provided by um, residents and other stakeholders from Shorewood at those meetings. So these many roundabouts are what um, IDOT carried forward. Um, for, for intersection improvements at, at State and, and, and Raven. Um, and then lastly, the last component is replacing the bridge over the DuPage River. Um, so there's two alternatives that right now IDOT has carried forward uh, for further analysis. Um, both involve replacing the existing bridge that's out there. Um, this one here you can see is the, the blue is the new bridge. And so it would be construction of a new bridge on an adjacent alignment to the existing one. And that has some benefits and, and, um, and drawbacks. Um, benefits of that are, um, you know, Sile Road can stay under traffic while this bridge and much of the road is, and, and, you know, and components of the roundabouts are being constructed. So, um, you know, we can keep traffic open longer. Um, really, we only need to, uh, we'll only need to detour traffic when we're kind of making those connections to the, to the roadway. Um, you know, another, another good uh, feature of this is it kind of gives us a little buffer. This is the village's um, Sally Road Force Main Pump Station, um, and you can kind of see where it is in relation to the bridge now, and it's, it's real tight. Um, and so it kind of gives us a little bit of buffer um, to, to get us away from the intersection a little bit. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the advantages of this project overall is there, this, this maroon um, line, th this is pedestrian accommodations, a multi-use path. So um, in all, both alternatives, um, IDOT is proposing to have a multi-use, have multi-use accommodations on this bridge, which I think will be very beneficial um, in kind of providing a connection across the river 
um, for pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, this path actually carry, uh, continues all along the north side of Silo Road, connects to the improvements that IDOT is planning to do on 59 um, as well. So it's gonna really provide some good, some good linkage as well. Um, it's, it's something that's not there now. The bridge right now is not something that's enjoyable to cross as a, as a, or safe as a pedestrian or, or um, bicyclist. Uh, the other alternative that IDOT is looking at is replacement of the existing bridge on the existing alignment. So you can see they're, they're just plopping the bridge on top of the existing one. Um, advantages of this, or disadvantages of this, are that Sile Road will basically be closed at DuPage River for the better part of a construction season. So it's going to have some real impacts from a traffic perspective and, and a detour perspective that we're going to have to work out as we move forward. Um, and then you could also see the issues with the proximity to the, um, to the pump station, to the village's pump station, and, and that, that roundabout is right on top, and there's, there's probably going to be some, some issues there. Um, the, the, one of the benefits of this um, alternative is you can see these red lines here are existing right away. And you can see that we're really operating, with the exception of this corner here and, and kind of over here, we're really kind of being able to construct this improvement within the existing right away for the most part. Um, going back to the last alternative, you can see how much we're encroaching beyond the right away here and here, and so it's it's more impactful from a from a right away perspective. So, um, you know, right away being the advantage of the of the um, existing alignment and really um, maintenance of traffic and detour limiting maintenance of traffic and detour and, and road closures being the advantage of the of the offset um, alignment on that. Did I is there anything that I missed with that, Chris? Uh, the uh Doing the other alignment uh, is also the fact that this is a this is a new bridge, right? They will both be new bridges as they've been right. as they've been um, carried forward by IDOT, um, and um, we'll get into that in a little bit. But basically, the existing bridge out there now is is in poor condition. Um, it's been uh, weight limited by IDOT um, and um, and needs significant repairs, um, and, and so. Um, because of the traffic that's proposed, because of this 2040 project, um, out this 2040 horizon we're looking at, um, replacement is what um, is what IDOT has has been carrying forward, um, which, which we th I think we think is probably the the right thing um, to to repair the bridge is about two million dollars to replace it is about four, so getting a brand you know, getting a brand new bridge, and we'll go we'll get back to that as well um, in a little bit more detail in a, in a minute here. Um, obviously, this project will connect to the state's project. So all this light gray, again, is the state's project. You can kind of see what they're, you know, they have dual lefts, dual rights onto, uh, on Silo Road onto uh, 59. Um, this is the kind of the beginning of the diverging diamond, and the, the actual interchange is back, is back this way. But this is kind of how basically we're going to be tying into their project, um, you know, east of Sarver Drive. That 2040 projection, is that with the mall situation calculated into that? So, kind of. Um, that 2040 projection um, anticipates some type of development. It, it, it accounts for all the background development that's going to be happening between now and 2040, and that's probably one of them. But one of the things that we're waiting to hear back from IDOT, because it's a question that we had for them, is um, you know, that's a pretty intensive um, use that they're proposing there. And is that particular Rock Run Crossings development, as it's currently proposed, included in these projections? And I, th I think the answer to that is no. As best I can tell, we're waiting for them to get us some information of, of what is included and, and what is not. So that's due back to us this week sometime. Um, so well, this may not even be that adequate. Um, no, I, I think it will. I think, I think it will. Um, we'll have to see. I mean, there's a... They, they did plan for, I mean, it's not just Rock Run Crossings development. It's, and back in 2040, when they were doing 2040 projections, remember, they were planning on shoreward being 40-some thousand people um, in 2040. So there's a whole lot of development in the area that is going into these projections. So um, that's why we're asking um, IDOT to kind of give us this more information so that we can understand, is it a significant impact or, or is it kind of just um, more of a, a blip in the whole scheme of what, what they were projecting for the region. We're not doubting the 2040 as uh, the emails has gone out from Brian uh, with the IDOT. It's, it's what's the 2025 once the mall is up. That's the, that's the number. How quick are we going to get to that 
additional uh, amount of traffic that we're going to see. That's kind of what we want to know is what that impact is. And they, they've uh, told us that Joliet doesn't have a traffic study yet for the development, and, and so IDOT wouldn't be able to give us any more information at this point. So, yes, Supposedly a traffic study is going to be done soon, so we have definitely asked for that as soon as it can be made available. And, and I think IDOT's looking, they typically look at these horizons, year 2040, year 2050, and so what we conveyed to them at our last meeting was, yeah, that's important. We need to know what, 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 we have to, what has to be done by 2040. However, you're opening an interchange and you're telling us 2025. What do we need? To, what needs to be in place by 2025 to handle that? There's kind of two horizons that we're looking at, and so that's information that they're supposed to be getting back to us as well, so that we have an understanding of um, kind of the time frames of of the different impacts that we need to mitigate or that need to be mitigated um, on on Silo Road. Um, and as far as the phase one, that, and IDOT is the one that's leading the phase one, IDOT is paying for it. Um, their consultant is, is the one doing the phase one engineering. Um, they told us at our meeting this a couple of weeks ago that um, they expect to have design approval in, mid, in the middle of this year. So coming up pretty soon, um, they'll have the, the preliminary engineering done um, for this, and, uh, and we'll talk about kind of what that means going forward. Phase one, phase one engineering, because it was all one phase one originally, it got broken out into four projects, so they're carrying four separate phase ones forward now. Um, they carry the phase one for the interchange ahead of everything else, um, but they are carry, they are r r kind of, um, you know, f carrying out the, the remainder of the phase one for all four projects. So, so the four projects is Olympic Boulevard, the interchange for 55, 59, and Route 52, and then Silo Road. Those are the four separate projects. Um, so that kind of leads us to this first point I have here. Um, IDOT has indicated to us that because Silo Road is a, is a non-IDOT route um, and is its own project now, they have no plans to carry, the, to carry this project any further than, than Phase 1 engineering. So um, if any improvements are to be done, if, if um, Phase 2 engineering is to be done, um, they would be looking to the village or, or someone else, just not IDOT, um, to carry that forward. So uh, one of the things that we brought up with them is, um, you know, is the village obligated to, do, to move forward with anything after you guys are done? And they, they said no. There's no obligation for the village to move forward with phase, one, phase two engineering, with construction, with anything. You know, however, the village is going to be the one left to um, kind of bear the impact, the village's residents are going to be left bearing the impacts of, of this additional traffic that we've been talking about. So, um, you know, like we said before, you know, traffic analysis are showing that we're, that the intersections are failing um, today. Um, there's some really big backups um, on Silo Road um, today. And, and with traffic doubling by year 2040 because of the interchange and regional development, um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a slog um, driving down Silo Road um, if, if things aren't done to improve it. Um, and lastly, we had kind of talked a little bit about it, but the bridge needs significant repairs, um, even as it stands today. We've been in, uh, in I think we've been uh, inspecting it every year for the last three or four years, and before that it was every two years. Um, IDOT recently, last year, put a weight restriction on it. I think it's 15 tons, I don't remember, um, um, which basically is a sign of, of its, its condition and the fact that um, it has a poor superstructure. It, it need the superstructure needs to be replaced at a minimum. Um, you know, on top of it all, there we've talked before. It's there's no pedestrian accommodation. So, if that's something, if that's an objective of the village, which it seems like it has been on a lot of projects, that the kind of accommodating um, pedestrians and and bicyclists and stuff <laughs> like that, where where it can be done. Um, th you know, that can't be done on the existing bridge as, as it stands right now. So, um, you know, there, there are a number of repairs that, that need to be done. Um, and so, the, <clears throat> looking at kind of going forward, the, the, the phase two and phase three engineering, which is final design and construction engineering, right away acquisition and construction of the road improvements and the bridge replacement, we're looking at about $12 million is what it's estimated at right now. So obviously a, a very significant um, price tag. Um, you know, one of the things that um, Seabell and, and staff are doing is right now Will County Governmental League has a call for projects on their surface transportation program, um, federal funding, um, and that's due in March, and we are going to be applying for federal funds for this project um, through both the Will County Governmental League and IDOT for another STP um, funding. Um, 
and, we, and by doing that, we could potentially get up to an 80-20 federal local share um, of, of all those costs. So it uh, doesn't cost anything to submit. We're kind of, you know, it, it helps that we have this phase one engineering that's already been done by IDOT that um, is, you know, was done at no cost to the village and, and we can now kind of, re, you know, use that to our benefit now. Um, and so, you know, that's one thing that we're doing. Um, I, I also understand, I think the, the project is tentatively included in the, the, the five-year budget that, that you guys are going to be seeing at some point, obviously with some contingencies on funding and, and things like that. But uh, what we wanted to do is kind of at least we got to figure out what the, we had to figure out what this project's going to cost. We're finally there. Um, we, now we got to figure out if it's something that the village wants to move forward with, um, we got to figure out how we're going to pay for it um, and the timing of it. Um, and so that's kind of what we're, that's what we're working on now because I, I don't think there's any doubt that there is an improvement that needs to be done to the bridge as well as to the road to accommodate this traffic that's coming. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a significant, it's a significant project. It's a significant cost. Yeah, Brian, those, those applications have to be in by when? March 6th. Of 21? No, uh, this Mar March 6th. Okay. Yep. And that's for the federal funds. That's right. Yep. We won't find out till the fall if we if we get them. Um, but, uh, you know, we do, you do get extra points if you have various phases of project development done. So, you know, we're going to be able to check the box that phase one engineering is done, which which should help us out. So what's Bolingbrook got on a got on the schedule that I don't know okay. that I don't know. Hey, we'll make a phone call here and find out. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah, no, I know there's and that's going to be competitive. I mean, there's I think there's 17 million dollars or so available over the next five years. Um, and obviously everybody in Will County is is looking to looking to get a piece of that, too. So um, that's why we're not just we don't want to just rely on this, this uh, these federal funds through Will County Government League. We're also going to be applying for STP bridge funds through IDOT, um, which is a separate pot of money that, you know, the bridge really is going to cost about half this project. Um, and uh, and so we're trying to get that funded through a separate mechanism so that hopefully we are not relying on Will County Governmental League for that full amount because represents a significant chunk of, of the money that they have available. Um, so I guess the thing that I wanted to end on, uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions um, about anything you've heard, but one of the, the I, IDOT um, at our meeting told us that there's a couple pieces of information that they need from the village in order to finish out the phase one engineering. Um, the one of them is that um, offset versus on existing alignment bridge replacement, which the village prefers. Um, and the other is whether or not the pedestrian accommodations should take place on the bridge or whether they should be part of, they should be on a separate structure, you know, not unlike the one that was put out here at US 52 and River. Um, that, you know, that um, uh, prefab uh, br um, metal bridge. So um, what they're, ask they're asking for that information, for basically knowing that if this project gets carried forward, it's going to be the village probably that carries it forward. They want to make sure that the phase one engineering includes what the village wants so that we don't have to go back and retrace any of our steps to get it done. So, um, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't know if, if, if there's a discussion to be had now, if we have to, if we have to talk about it another time, but it's basically those, those, two, those two options here. And they've said that they really can't go any further um, on the phase one until they get that feedback from us, just because they don't want to, they don't want to have to backtrack when we, you know, if they take a guess and it's the, it's the wrong guess. Um, from a staff perspective, we've looked at it, um, and um, you know our recommendations are for the bridge, the offset alignment. Um, we think that the the huge advantage of being able to keep Sally Road open for most of the construction season is 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 huge. Uh, if Sally Road is closed for an entire construction season, um, potentially that could happen after some you know ramp closures to 59 for the interchange project. It just it's going to be it's going to be tough. Um, so anything that we can do to to reduce the amount of time that Sally Road would be closed, I think is is um, is worth looking into and is beneficial for sure. Um, and obviously, there was uh, some other considerations like the proximity <laughs> to the pump station and things like that 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 would be would be beneficial as well. But I think overwhelmingly, it's the it's the 
the detour of, of Silo Road and trying to keep that to a minimum. I was at this meeting too, and uh, <coughs> I think right now it'd be a good idea if the three of us, the three of you, because <coughs> I've already made up my mind, I'd, I'd like to see it a combination, okay, on, on the bridge or combined with, with the bridge. About the pedestrian um, accommodations, yeah, yeah, the economy yeah. of scale is there, the Makes timing sense. is there, and we would know what the other would be if we didn't have it, anyways. I think the offset makes the most sense. You have it gives you the ability, as you said, it gives you the ability to keep Sile Road open <clears throat> as long as you can. It's going to give you a little more access into the pump station. Unfortunately, there's a little <laughs> bit of right away to obtain, but uh, I think it makes the most sense. Uh, keeping the on, you know, the pedestrian crossing on the bridge. Obviously, I'm assuming, you know, that's separated, of course, for mm -hmm. safety of whatnot. Yep. But versus a separate structure, it's a cost-saving measure. Yeah, definitely. So, river crossing would be a great bridge that would give you an yeah, example. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Yeah, We've got that go. separated. <laughs> yeah, high curb, like a six-inch curb elevated to create a little bit of a barrier or whatnot. Yeah. yeah, and this would probably be even more beefy than that. We're, we'll have to, you know, we'll have to follow federal um, guidelines and everything. And assuming and traffic federal counts, from, it yeah, makes sense. Yeah. But I, I agree. I would barrier. rather see it as an on bridge with the off with an offset alignment. It makes the most sense, the most cost effective. It appears. Oh, I agree. Okay. I'm still I'd, just... I go with the offset also. But I had a question: What's the advantage to on bridge pedestrian accommodation as opposed to? Uh, off bridge, having it separate. The on bridge would be a lot. Would be would be cheaper. Um, you That's the only advantage. Yeah, there? yeah. You're, I mean, you're, oh, you're you're already building the bridge, so you're just making it, you know, eight feet wider, um, as opposed to, you know, putting a bridge like I said at the intersection we put out there. That's going to have its own. Yeah, it's going to have its own abutments. It's going to have. Um, it's going to center pillar, depending on that. Yeah. How far we are length. Yeah, it'll be significantly. More I was just expensive. curious if it was anything other than cost. But I, I'd go along with what uh, everyone else does. Okay. okay. Got your well, that direction. That makes the most sense. Okay. okay. Especially if Sile Road's going to be shut down for 18 months and then we're going to tear it down again for another summer. That's not good. Right. Definitely. Take her away, Brian. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's that's really all I had. That's I got what I came here for. Um, <clears throat> if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But that's that's all I had. I have questions, but I shouldn't say it right now, so it's not appropriate. <laughs> Just need to hope we can get some funding, okay? Maybe we can get some from Rock Run since this is, well, I, never mind. Yeah. Submit the applications. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And item number one is complete. <clears throat> Moving on to number two, discussion on the Unified Public Works Facility, Mr. Kulata. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> what we're doing is bringing back to you something that we talked at the last meeting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so what staff did at that last meeting was we presented the, the needs uh, for a unified public works facility. Uh, we spoke to how uh, the financing could be accomplished. Uh, you had asked us to come back with some sort of a timeline uh, in order to accomplish this. Um, so what we have before you um, is a, a pretty detailed timeline that takes us through the design process. It uh, shows you where, um, from a, a, a debt, a borrowing standpoint, we need to take certain steps in order to make this uh, funded, and then all the way through to the point where we're actually constructing uh, the facility. So please keep in mind that this is a, a very approximate schedule. Um, I think it has the benchmarks, you know, that, that we would recommend and that we would uh, need to take in order to get through this process. Uh, however, the, the exact when, you know, starting and ending could certainly fluctuate a little bit. The goal still is to try to get to a point where we are selling bonds at a, a, a maximum favorability, you know, uh, st standpoint for the village. So we want to avoid that uh, the political season at the end of the year where investors tend to be a little uh, less predictable um, and the rates may not be as favorable uh, for the village. Uh, so what this process would do is, is definitely 
put us in a good position to avoid that later in the year. Um, if there are specific questions about the steps here, uh, I'm sure we could address those. Uh, but if you don't have any right now, I guess what I'd do is ask uh, Chris to, to take the next step and kind of explain some of the, the recommended approach from a design and construction standpoint. When we had uh, met last, we had talked about a couple different thoughts and um, one of the comments were to try to get to a, uh, a GMP, a guaranteed max price. Uh, looked at a couple different op uh, options from design build to a traditional. Um, <clears throat> after talking with uh, Tria, we have uh, Jim Petrox here from Tria. He can, he can answer some more specific um, things, but we, we kind of took a look at this as uh, utilizing a service from Tria to uh, continue some of the work that they had already done for the village in regards to the public works facility. Uh, they've got uh, some good ideas of, of the need of, of the department, um, a, a general layout of, of the property with the uh, uh, consideration of all the equipment and all the things that we would do operationally and um, all the equipment we have to make sure it was stored. Uh, so if, if you want, I can go through each of the lines here. Um, and, and go in detail or um, answer any questions you may have. Um, you know, the, I, I can start with the, as Jim said, you know, we can move that start schedule, uh, but we were looking at bringing forward a contract with TRIA to let them start design. Um, moving down the line a little bit, they would be able to get some information uh, together as schematic design and then get us into a position to hire a construction manager that construction manager, the importance of that is, uh, as I've been told in this concept, would be to uh, work with the architect to help refine the detail and, and get the design to a position where uh, toward the end of that de design, we would be able to get an idea of that guaranteed max price, which seemed to be of interest to the board. Uh, we could start it earlier and try to get an idea of what that cost would be today um, but there's a lot of, uh, there'll be a lot more detail and a lot better pricing as the project were designed uh, to, a, to a higher percentage uh, for con confidence in what those uh, prices would be out in the market. So the construction manager would help the uh, architect get that. Um, I, I'm not super versed in that. I've been educated in the last uh, year or two from uh, Jim and a couple others, and I, I think it's uh, helpful if there's our specific questions about you know some of the steps that are here integrated in the um, chart here is as Jim mentioned the financial of where we would have to take some steps to make sure that we were able to go out to bond and when um, and in, a, in these schedule lines <coughs> with the design to get us to a point where uh, the village could issue that debt by the uh, end of uh, August near September and be able to uh, get into construction. Do we have anything so far? I thought we had <clears throat> something that right. you were showing before. Sure, right. So far, um, you know, as, as you know, the board has gone out and uh, had TRIA do analysis on a couple different facilities. This being one, we have a concept, a, a recommended square footage general layout of the land. Uh, we've actually worked with the engineers to make sure that the elevation on the property uh, is sufficient so that when the Westcom Tower was placed, so there is a lot of work there that has started. Um, so as of right now, the last professional service architect that we have utilized is TRIA, uh, which is why the recommendation would be to bring them forward and let them continue their work. If we were to go out to do an RFP or RFQ for you know another qualified architect, we would be starting over and having to bring them in and, and bring them up to speed, discuss the need, uh, look at uh, all that, all, all the space and, and everything. So it would be a, a start over. We have like step one done, kind of. In general, kind of. yes, sir. I, I mean, I'm I'm on board with. Let's you know, there's a timeline we're trying to meet. You know, Tree has been fair to us. They've been good to us with some of the stuff we've done in the past. They say move forward with it. Well, what line is it that we've reached the point of no return? Like, 
All right. Jim, do you want to mind helping us here with that part? I think it's pretty much do you go to bed or not? Right. Video report. Sorry. Mayor, the question in terms of crossing a line for getting the bonds? No. The, the, I would call it the point of no return. Which, which place do we get locked in here to where we've committed so many funds that there's no backing up? Um, actually, anywhere to the end. So quite honestly, so when you're, you're actually designing this, right, and we've had a lot of discussion of just saying, if you've got that deadline, you're trying to meet that deadline, we started the design, right? Time is a factor. But if we're designing and we're moving forward, right, uh, you're not spending money on the building, the big cost, right, the $10, $11 million, you're spending time on design costs, kind of like the phase one we're talking about, it's phase two. You're getting that. Those drawings don't go bad. So even if you said in September and we received bids and you're just like, I, I just don't want to move forward with the project, you can shelve the project, put it out the bid again next year, in five years, right, we'd have to just look at the codes again, make sure the codes didn't change. Okay. But at that point, you can do it whenever. That answers my question. Okay, thank you. Okay. So this uh, this was a budgeted item for design and architectural in this current budget year. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, a, a placeholder to, to start this. Um, you know, with, with uh, recommendations out of the last meeting, you know, it's a, it, it makes sense to go to this route. Uh, Jim has been helpful in, in the crowd. We have uh, Warren Sile from Morgan Harbor. He's helped us along the way too to give us some reality checks on what's out there and, uh, and a different perspective, honestly, on um, discussing design build and some, some options that way. Um, you know, what, what I probably flashed over pretty quick was after we get to the point where we're starting with uh, the design, um, TRIA would help us go out and pr produce that RFQ for the um, construction manager. And at that point, that person would be um, our other advocate as the building's going to whatever that is. So I don't know if you can explain the, that process a little bit with the RFQ. Of yeah, just um, going out there and actually getting an RFQ and you can actually get proposals from construction managers to actually say, here is, this is our project. The more information we can give them in terms of design, right? Here's our schedule, here's the building, here's the layout they can kind of plan and the, the benefit of having a construction manager, they can do that pre-construction services where they're really looking at saying, you know, the board says our budget is X, construction manager's estimating it all the way through and he's working as part of the team and saying, okay, we, you know, I, I get it, staff may want X, Y, or Z, but it's over budget. So we can, let's cut that one down or we, we found some savings here, pricing and copper went down, so guess what, we can afford a little bit more, whatever it may be. They've got a little bit more of a, a thumb on the pulse of you know the, the estimating on the day to day, so it's just working in coordination as we're doing that and as we're moving forward. And then if the board decides to to turn that into a GMP, right? As Chris touched on, it, um, a, we're talking to construction managers, right? You could turn that in drawings right now into a guaranteed maximum price, but the drawings are not complete. So it's literally there's a lot of exclusions. There's a lot of you know assumptions and so forth. So you're, as you're going through design, they're kind of saying, okay, well, that wasn't our assumption. That's what we, not what we had money in. So there's, there's a lot of back and forth there. So the, the farther you can get along with drawings and get things going quicker, the, the more the decisions of the board get put down on paper so everyone's on the same page. Yeah. <clears throat> as I said, I, I start with the timeline. Stay on track. It's, yeah. Work on the agreement. I agree. Okay. Well, then, yeah. So what we will do is we'll work with uh, <coughs> Jim and, and ask for that proposal, and, and I, um, we'll try to get that all together and leave that up to Mr. Collada. Yeah. The sooner we can get started in design, the better, because we can, just in case any hiccups, we can get it before the bonds are need to be issued. So I'll bring the proposals to you as soon as possible. Yeah. But I think that's where I was at, too. On the time that we go after the bonds, they're going after, we'd be going after the bonds for a specific job, not just, you know, 
Right. They, they are going to be GOs <clears throat> more than likely, right? Yeah, I mean, in, okay. within that bond right. issue, there's a limit to what you can spend the money on. Right. That's the point of no return for us. Right, and we've had a lot of discussion of, you know, do you go out for bonds now on a budget? Now, what date is that? But well, the bond, I saw the bond that sale well earlier. I, I think, I think, I'm sorry, I was going to say, uh, Ann is here, so she can answer some of the questions on that. What, you know, because she was part of, been part of the team uh, meeting with uh, Jim, Jim and I, and, and. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chris. <laughs> um, so we can structure the timeline of the bond sale around their design process. So what the, from start to finish, a, from start to finish, the minimum amount of time we can get bond sold is about 10 weeks. You'll see we've extended that schedule a little bit to accommodate um, the bid time and the negotiation so that we have a final price of exactly how much we're agreeing to and then we can go sell bonds for that amount so that we don't, we could do it sooner in the process, you know, potentially at that 50% construction mark, they were, um, you know, you were giving us advice that sometimes that's, that's a route communities may choose to do, um, but the information isn't going to be quite as certain and we don't want to see ourselves in a position where we've um, <coughs> gone and issued debt for not enough money or maybe for too much money. So we have time on our side here and if we can roughly stick to this schedule, we've got time to get to that final bid number and use that as our final bond number. Okay, I'm looking around. If I'm just looking at a piece of paper with numbers printed on it, I'm looking at 6-1. June the first. The fifty percent of cost. cost That's a fifty. Yeah. You you would be. I'm looking at like July 29th. So it's that, down that way. Yeah, that June first. After bid. the bonds. Yeah. Before that, the bonds. That June first date is when we would start the debt process, where Spear would start collecting information from us on about how much money we think we're going to need and what we're going to use it for and how we plan to pay it back and start doing all of that work that has to be done before a bond sale. And then they would start putting feelers out into the market and saying, hey, Shorewood's gonna be coming after some money here later this summer. We've still made no commitment at this point. That's, that's all preliminary. Um, so then we would um, have to go through a ratings process and that's gonna take a little bit of time. We'd come with a first read of the ordinance and that would just to be, excuse me, that would, that would be to get everyone on the same page and this is where we think we're at. And then when that bidding and negotiation comes through um, and we get that final number, we can fine tune the number that had preliminarily been out into the marketplace. So when we, when we go to bond sale day, that's kind of the, or that is the, the point of no return, as you were saying earlier. Okay. All For right. the money. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I want to try to get some idea as this big ball rolling down the hill when it gets too big for us to put the stop to it, okay? Sure. And so we're talking midsummer in that in that area. Right. And we'll be meeting with the board giving updates on our, our budget where the current estimates are and everything and what we're there, what what's going on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, if if there's always things that happen in any kind of time frame. <clears throat> We've got other things on the, out there that we're looking at, oh, yeah. huge items. In fact, if something were to occur that at this time we couldn't afford this now, I want to know when to put the brakes to it, okay? So you can stop the design at any point through the entire process? Yeah, no, I'd, I'd like, that, just... I, I think the design's a good thing. We okay. should have that sitting on the table ready to go. Okay. It's that point of no return that I keep going back to. The only point I want of, to know. I'm reading right. So the only point of no return is when you actually approve that contractor's price. So you're going to receive bids. We're going to give you a recommendation. Yeah, but we're going to get bonds right. issued that are going to have a limit on what they can be spent on. Right. So we'll know the number before you issue the bonds. So we're going to work it out. We're going to be talking yeah. about the contractor. We will receive bids. We'll issue bonds. And then from there, we'll tell the contractor after that, like, you are authorized to go. Then it'll come to the board for official. 
because even at that point you can say projects denied. We we reject all bids and and that's it. Yeah. Contractor, you don't owe the contractor or anything. You don't do any of that stuff. And, all right. And the drawings are set for whenever. I do want to make a mention that you know at our meeting with IDOT, we were shown a very clear picture of the impact of the Route 52 and 59 intersection improvements yeah. of how much that will impact 107 Jefferson, which is currently the old fire barn, uh, to the point where the right uh, the turn uh, coming off of DuPage would be right at that front door, uh, basically. So um, just to remind the board of that, as if you haven't seen any of those drawings at this point. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. <clears throat> okay, item number two. Thing completed, moving on, approval of a payment in the amount of $85 to Anderson Towing. Motion to pay the bill. Second. Diane, roll call, please. Luciano. Yes. Warren. Yes. DeBold. Yes. Chapman. Yes. Pay the bill. <clears throat> uh, move on to reports. Trustee Warren, Public Works Committee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple quick things. The new VAC truck came in today. Looked very nice. I know some people are questioning the white and green, but I think it'll be okay. Um, minor snow removal so far. Probably should be a little more of this tomorrow. Um, and then just normal maintenance that we're doing, and then Chris has something to say. I started the meeting. I just wanted to say I, this will be the last meeting I'll be with you, Mayor. So I, I uh, appreciate, you know, the six years I've had here with the village. So still be a resident, and uh, I appreciate our time together. And I'd like to say, and I know I'm speaking for the board. They can speak for themselves if they want. But you've been a great addition to the village, and and uh, move public works ahead during a, a very, very strenuous time frame. So I'm sure you'll take that on to Romeo Will. And there are a better place for us having you here and you go there. There are a better place for it. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll miss you, but are you going to stay in town? Can you say or what? I'm staying in town. That's going to be no problem. So I, I've got. Uh, uh, my youngest is still in high school, freshman, so I want to see that through for sure. And then uh, a couple years after that, I'll be able to retire, so I, I'm not going to move anywhere. I, I love the town. I moved here for a reason, um, and, and it's been just great for my family. So it's a great place to, to work and great place to live, so thank you. Good. Good. Thanks for what you've done, and I will miss you. And the administrator and I had a long discussion today on how we think we're going to try to replace you, okay? Looks like it might take two. <laughs> okay. So, at any rate, uh, I'm sure you won't be a stranger. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, it looks like it's the Warren show today. Uh, <laughs> Trustee Warren, Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, next Planning and Zoning meeting will be March 4th here in this room. There will be four agenda items. It looks like it's going to be a full schedule that day, that evening. And that's all I have. Okay. While we're saying that, Trustee uh, Brockman, who usually gives that report, his brother passed away. I'm sure everybody got the information. I did. Tried to get over there earlier today, and the line was all the way out. So, uh, see what we can do tomorrow. Uh, the village sent a floral display for the for the uh, bereavement. Uh, so, our hearts go out to Steve and. We kind of wish him a little less pain throughout because he's got a lot of friends. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, Trustee DeBold, Parks and Recreation. Well, I don't mean to get up beef following that, but uh, 
<laughs> oh, it's mean to do that. <laughs> I see that. Okay. But on the parks and rec side of things, the uh, the spring edition of what they call the Shoreward Connection, it's the Village this new letter newsletter will be coming out this month. Uh, so that will be out there shortly. Watch your mailboxes for that. Registration for the community garden is ongoing. Registration for community wide garage sale is uh, going on. You can go to the village's website, check that out. It's uh, going to be April 24th and 25th. And then uh, we had Jump Fest, uh, Jump Fest on Saturday. 130 uh, jumpers came out. Uh, I want to say thank you to Walnut Trails Elementary, Sabarinos, Party Hoppers, all the volunteers, and step by step <coughs> child care. And then a few things coming up for everybody. Uh, we do have the Easter holiday coming up, so there's going to be flashlight Easter egg hunt out there at April 3rd, 8 o'clock, out at Scenes Four Seasons Park. There's going to be the uh, breakfast with the bunny on uh, April 4th, 9 a.m. at Troy Fire Station 2. You can register online for that. And the big Easter egg hunt is April 4, 1030, Scenes Four Seasons Park. It's an event, free event out there for kids 3 to 7. That's it. Let's call it good. Very good. <clears throat> Jim, if you, you want to pass, I, I, just because of, of that report, is kind of pass on to uh, Luke and, and <clears throat> Katie. If uh, I've had a couple of communications come in to me just to ask if there was ever plans to do the, the garage sales later in the year. Now, here's the reason that they came out. It's easier for them to get the stuff together through the warm weather periods instead of trying to get the stuff together in the spring. In March and spring. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we can we can certainly uh, talk about that. And I I just fulfilled my obligation. I said I'd pass that word on. Okay. All right. Thank you. The camera's my witness. Okay. All right, moving on. Trustee Luciano, Citizens Advisory. Uh, Citizens Advisory Committee will be meeting uh, February 27th at the Village Hall, second floor, large conference room. Uh, all residents are welcome to join us. And if there's any residents interested in getting involved in the committee, uh, the information to contact any of the members or myself is on the village web page. And that's all I have. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to move into executive session for litigation. Uh, now, this entire paragraph here. Uh, on the litigation, is it, it's just, I think it's sufficient to make the motion. Oh, thanks, Chris. Motion for uh, probable or imminent litigation in executive session. And Jim, I don't think we have personnel, but I may be wrong. That is correct. Okay, so hey. it's just a probable so. or imminent litigation. All right, uh, everybody, get that. Okay. And no, no action will be taken. No action will be taken, so the the camera people can wrap it up. I'll make that hey. motion. Second. Second. Okay, Diane, roll call, please. Luciano. Yes. Warren? Yes. DeBold? Yes. Chapman? Yes. We are in executive session.